food tour of Ecuador, coastal Ecuador. We ate these foods so that you don't have to. <laughs> but you might want to after seeing this video. You might want to. While living in Ecuador for the last six months, we discovered some really unique foods to that country. We're going to share those with you today and what our thoughts were, whether we liked them or didn't like them. Ecuador food is different on the coast versus in the Andes, and we spent time uh, in both locations, high elevation and low. Today we're going to focus a little bit more on coastal Ecuador foods and a handful of items that we discovered there. That's right, through our six months stay in Ecuador this past winter, we also found out that the food in Ecuador is different from other countries, both near and far. Near the end of the video, we're gonna talk about a food item so different, so unique, we're pretty sure you've never seen, heard, or tried it before. So stick around. <laughs> so the first item we wanna to bring to you today is called bolones, or a singular bolon. These are round, balls of softened green plantain dough, which in Espanol is called masa. It's often mixed with either cheese, egg, chicharrones, which is fried pig skin, or a mix of any or all of those. The mix was our favorite. It was. These can be a little bit dry, but luckily they're generally always served with the lime on the side to squeeze over top and what's called ahi. Yeah, ahi is a regional hot sauce uh, made a little bit differently depending on where you are in Ecuador, but it seemed to always be delicious with varying degrees of spiciness. Bolognes tend to be about the size of your hand. They're big and they're filling. The second item we wanted to talk to you about, which we found everywhere, is encebollado. Mm -hmm. That means in onions in Espanol. It's a fish soup. Most of these encebollados have a very rich broth and they're traditionally made with albacore tuna. In Ecuador, this is breakfast. Yeah, it seemed a little bit strange for us uh, as Canadians to eat uh, fish onion soup for <laughs> breakfast. The soup on its own was half decent. It was nicely flavored. But for breakfast, it's just not really, we're not accustomed to that. It's a little bit unordinary. So I think mm -hmm. we tried this soup one time for breakfast. And uh, that was it. After that, I did find myself trying to order it like at 11 a.m. <laughs> or noon to try to have it as like a lunch because for us, fish and broth was just more of a midday or evening meal. Right. And traditionally in Ecuador, the people told us that this is a pretty common, very traditional meal to have in the mornings because it's a hangover cure. <laughs> we wouldn't really know about that, though. We never had to try it, of course. Encebollado on the coast always came with plantain chips and lime to squeeze over the top. All right, almuerzo. Almuerzo in Espanol means lunch. But what we found in Ecuador is the almuerzos were like a five course meal that all came at once. And we were always surprisingly overwhelmed and shared that meal almost every time we were served it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a lunch deluxe. Lunch deluxe. It came with the juice, a soup as a starter, and then the plate of food, which was Again, it was just really huge. So you get your portion of beans, rice, and some kind of meat, either fish, chicken, whatever's on the menu at that day and time. Yeah, those components are pretty typical of a lot of Central and South American countries, even parts of Mexico, the rice, beans, meat. Mm -hmm. What kind of separated these almuerzos in Ecuador was the additional components that Laurie mentioned, the, the juice, the salad, the soup. That's right. Kind of turned it into a sprawling meal. Yeah plenty for two of us. And those were typically available earlier in the day, 8, 30, 9 a.m., right till kind of early afternoon. I would go sometimes at 3 p.m. to go pick up an almuerzo and they would be sold out. And these meals were three to four U.S. dollars. Very affordable. Especially since we split them all. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, now's a great time to click the like button and send us a whole bunch of money on Super Thanks. <laughs> Daddy needs almuerzo money. <laughs> <laughs> Ceviche in coastal Ecuador. We tried this a few times. We did. 
It's made differently again in different parts of Ecuador and the Andes would be different than on the coast. And from house to house it varies too, we noticed. Hmm. We were invited out to lunch at some local's house and she made a tomato-y one, another one made a limey one. Traditionally on the coast, ceviche is simple, made with shrimp or fish only and a limey juice broth. It's served always with chifles on the side. Chifles are like a sliced green plantain and then crispy fried. This is more the traditional recipe for ceviche that you'll see spread across many countries and we had seen it many times before. But when we compare that to the time we had ceviche with some friends in the highlands in the Andes, it was different, wasn't it? Yeah, it was more tomato-y based. Myself, I much preferred the tomato-based ceviche with the shrimp over the lime-based ceviche with the fish. I would agree with that completely. And actually, we had a hard time finding a tomato-y based one on the coast. Didn't see it, actually, if I remember. No. The only other point we want to make about ceviche is that it's not unique to Ecuador. We've eaten it, as Air said, in Mexico and other countries around the world. Heck, we make it in Canada sometimes in the hot summer. But it was so commonly found in Ecuador that we wanted to mention this item. Pretty much any restaurant you go to, you're going to find some kind of ceviche on the menu. Mm -hmm. Every time, on the coast especially. Yes. So our last item is the funkiest, most unique. From our research, it's only available in Ecuador. Maybe Peru, not too sure about that. But it's the corviche. Sounds like ceviche, but it's different. Corviche. Corviche. A little different. Nice accent. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Gracias. It was very good. Very filling. We're going to describe it to you and show you some footage that we have also. Corviche is prepared with green plantains again. That's made into a masa with maybe some seasonings. A masa is like a dough. Then it's stuffed with fish, a little bit of peanut paste, and then fried. So the corviche is always very crispy on the outside and creamy on the inside. And at first description, you would think this is divine. Crispy on the outside, creamy on the inside. But you know what? Peanut butter with fish with the dough was so different. We ate it. We ate it even more than once or twice. But it was, for a couple of Canadian prairie kids, it was really unique. Very unique, yeah. And of course, when you're talking about peanut butter and green plantain masa, it's carb heavy. If you eat too, mm. too many of those, you become a masa. <laughs> so the corviche, we would say, is very unique and a little bit odd, but it's kind of a must try when you go to a new country. That would be the most unique item we found on any menu, and it was widely available on the coast. Yeah. Now in the, in the inland and in the highlands, they have a much more unique dish. Maybe if you like this video, we'll do another one. And it's called kui. It's a very unique um, item. It is. Maybe we'll get into that in the next video Did for you. Did we try it? Do you want to know? Let us know in comments below. One of the most common questions we get, regardless of which country we end up living in, is what's the cost of living? So I'm sure you're going to be interested in this video where we cover some basic and common costs that we encountered in Ecuador. I think we're balloons now. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be anyone around. Found on coastal. Mm -mm -mm. Bye. <laughs>